Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking some more about stoichiometry and we're introducing uh, what a limiting reagent or reactant is. So reagent and reactant um, are both the same thing. Alright, so we're going to start out with a cake recipe and we're going to make a what looks like a equation for it or a reaction. So this terrible cake recipe, it has absolutely no flavor in it, <laughs> um, the reaction would be two flour plus one butter plus four eggs and two sugar plus one milk and two baking powder and that all gives us one cake, right? And so if we have this stuff down here in the kitchen, what's the maximum number of cakes we can make? So in order to find that out, we have to find out how many cakes each one of these ingredients will produce, right? So if we have 50 cups of flour and it takes uh, two cups to make one cake, then we could make potentially 25 cakes, right? And if we have four sticks of butter, we could make four cakes, because each cake takes one, one stick of butter. If we have 10 dozen eggs, that means we have 120 eggs, right? So we could make 30 cakes, because it takes four eggs per cake. And if we have 50 cups of sugar, we could make 25. And 50 cups of milk, we could make 50. And if we have 50 teaspoons of baking powder, we could make um, 25, right? So the maximum number of cakes that we could possibly make with this recipe and what we have is um, four, right? Because once we've made four cakes, whoopsie, once we've made four cakes, we're all out of butter and if we don't have any butter if all the butter is gone this we can't make any more cake because that's one of the reactants one of the uh, ingredients so the butter here in this case right let me make this thing smaller hold on so the butter is called the limiting reagent over here. All right, so the butter is the limiting reagent. And the limiting reagent is what limits the reaction. It determines the amount of product we get. So it always runs out first in the reaction. And once we're out of that ingredient, the reaction can't go anymore. All right, and then everything else in this reaction, all of these other things, right? All of these other things, they're called excess reagents. Let's see if I can make an arrow today. Because we have extra of them. So excess reagents will be left over after the reaction stops. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a couple more of these with this cake recipe, and then uh, we'll apply it to chemistry. All right, so I put the cake recipe up here, and here's the reaction again. And it says, 
we have this time we have 40 cups of flour so this time we could make with 40 cups of flour we could make 20 cakes and with eight sticks of butter we could make eight with one dozen eggs so that's 12 eggs we could make three with 17 cups of sugar we could make um, eight and a half right so you can make a half a cake you just have to use a smaller pan and with two cups of milk we could make two and with 40 teaspoons of baking powder we could make 20 so our limiting reagent is going to be the milk and we're going to make two cakes so after that there's no more milk all the milk is gone so this reaction can't go anymore all right so um, here's a question here where we have five moles of N2 and eight moles of H2 and we want to know how much ammonia we're going to make all right, and the thing that's different about this question compared to all the other stoichiometry questions we've done in the past is that we're given two amounts, and that's more realistic. You know, it's more likely that you're not going to know which one of your reactants is going to um, control how much product you get, and so you're always going to have to determine the limiting reagent um, when you're stuck with two amounts instead of just one. So in the past, I would have asked you a question like, you've got five moles of N2, um, and you have excess H2, so how many grams of NH3 will you get? Or you have 8 moles of H2 and excess N2, so how many grams of NH3 would you get? Um, but uh, now we've got both of them. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine how much each of these will produce of NH3. So I need to find out how many grams of NH3 will be produced from 5 moles of N2 and how many grams of NH3 will be produced from 8 moles of H2. So I'm going to write both of these down here. And then I'm going to calculate how many grams each one makes. So just like with the cake recipe, I had to figure out with the cakes how many cakes would be produced for each reactant or ingredient and then the one that made the least amount that was the limiting reagent and that was how many cakes we made so I'm gonna do the same thing here so I've got moles starting out and I want to end up with grams so I'm gonna start here at moles and I'm gonna go here to grams so I have two steps to do so the first one is gonna be a mole to mole ratio and it's gonna be from nitrogen to ammonia so I've got one mole of N2 to two moles of NH3. So I've done the first step, and then the second step is going to be doing the molar mass of NH3. So one mole of NH3 is 17 grams of NH3. All right, and so before I even pick up my pencil, I'm going to continue on or pick up my calculator, I'm sorry, I'm going to continue on down here on the bottom. All right, let me move this out of the way. I'm going to shrink it down even smaller, stick it over here. So, 8 moles of H2, so I have to do first, just like on the one above it, I have to do a mole to mole ratio. So, 3 moles of H2 for every 2 moles of NH3 and then one mole of NH3 is 17 grams of NH3. So now if I calculate these, um, I get 170 grams of NH3 on the top, and I get 91 grams of NH3 on the bottom. So that tells me that H2 
is our limiting reactant because it produces the least amount of NH3 and that's how much NH3 we're going to make. So after we made 91 grams of NH3, there's absolutely no more of this because that's what hydrogen can make. With 8 moles of hydrogen, you're going to make 91 grams. So all of the H2 is gone. And if there's no more H2, I can't make NH3. Okay, so this reaction can't go anymore. So with these ingredients, 5 moles of N2 and 8 moles of H2, we'll never make 170 grams of NH3 because there's not enough hydrogen to make that. And so N2 is our excess reagent. Right, that's an excess. Okay, so let's do another one. We've got this single replacement reaction, and we want to know how many moles of H2 can be produced from the reaction of 4.96 moles of HBr. and 3.22 moles of aluminum. And so I want to find moles of H2. All right, so with this, I've got, I want to go from, where's my thing? I want to go from here to here, right? And I want to find moles of H2. So I've got moles of HBr. So I'm right here, and I just want to go here. So that's only one step. It's just a mole to mole ratio. So the mole to mole ratio for HBr, there's six moles of HBr for every three moles of H2. And so then I have to do the same thing down here. So for aluminum, I've got two moles of aluminum, and that's going to make three moles of H2. And so that's going to get me 2.48 moles of H2 and 4.83 moles of H2 here. So this is our limiting reactant. And this is the answer. We'll make 2.48 moles of H2. That's the most that we can make. After we've made that, there will not be any more HBr in this reaction, and the reaction can't go anymore. <laughs> All right, last one. So in this one, um, it's asking what the maximum amount of moles of each product that can be formed, assuming we start with 10 grams of sucrose and 10 grams of oxygen. So I'm going to rewrite this reaction. Obviously not well, but it helps me understand what I've got. And so I've got 10 grams of sugar and I've got 10 grams of oxygen. And I want to know the moles of each product. So I want to know the moles of this. And I also want to know the moles of this. All right, so in order to determine how much carbon dioxide we're going to make or how much water we're going to make, we have to know which one of the reactants is going to run out first, which one's the limiting reagent. So I have to pick one of these to calculate first. And I usually just pick the first one because it's listed first. So I just use that one, <laughs> all right? And I've got grams of one thing, and I want moles of another thing. So that's a two-step process. OK. So I've got 10 grams of sucrose, and I've got 10 grams of O2. All right, so hopefully you have this little map thingy in front of you because I'm going to get rid of it. It's in my way. All right. And so the first thing we have to do is um, use molar mass because we've got grams, so I have to use the molar mass to get to moles. 
So I've got 342 grams of sucrose is in one mole. That's the molar mass. <clears throat> and then we have to do a mole to mole ratio. And so for every one mole of sucrose, we're going to have 12 moles of CO2. Okay. And then down here on the bottom, I've got 10 grams of oxygen. I'm going to do the same thing, but I've only got 32 grams in a mole. And for every 12 moles of O2, oops, <coughs> I make 12 moles of CO2. So if I go through and I calculate this, I get 0 0.35 moles of CO2. <coughs> and I get 0 0.313 moles of CO2. So since this one makes the least amount. That's my limiting reagent. And this is the amount of carbon dioxide that I want that I that I'm going to make. Now, I'm not finished with this problem. I still have to determine how much water I'm making. But since I've already figured out which one of these reactants limits the reaction, I don't have to figure that part out again. So, if it's the limiting reactant for one of the products, that means it's the limiting reactant for this reaction starting with these amounts. The only thing that could change that was if we increase the amount of O2, um, then the limiting reagent could change. But as long as we're at these amounts, oxygen is going to limit this reaction. So I'm only going to calculate the amount of water from 10 grams of oxygen. You can calculate it again with this one but you're going to end up finding out that oxygen is the limiting reagent. So for water, <clears throat> I've got 10 grams of O2, and again, 32 grams is in one mole of O2. There's 12 moles of O2 consumed for every 11 moles of CO2. I'm sorry. <clears throat> of water. I'm choking on something. I don't know what's going on. And so if you calculate through this, I get that it's 0 0.286 moles of H2O. So that's it. That's limiting reagent. These should get easier as time progresses.